What's going on my friends, Hank here, and welcome to this very first episode of the Sprues and Brews Scale Model Showcase. A new weekly series where I get to show off some of my favorite models, all built by you guys, from around this wonderful world of scale modeling. A huge thank you to everyone who sent in builds this week, I've gotten to check out some absolutely fantastic models. You guys are all so talented and I'm really excited to share your work with everybody today. And if this is your first time here, welcome aboard. If you'd like to submit one of your own builds for a chance to get featured here on the Scale Model Showcase, I'll have instructions in the description below on how you can get involved. I've got a few really interesting selections to spotlight today, so let's get right into it. Grab yourself a beverage, get cozy, let's check out some scale models. Alright, so quick disclaimer before we get into our first build here. If you sent me a submission and you don't end up seeing it get featured today, don't sweat it. I've got a big list going of all your awesome builds, and those submissions will be rolling over into my pool for next week as well. So make sure you tune in for next Friday's episode and you might just recognize one of your own builds on the list. With that said, on to our first feature for today. This build is coming to us from all the way over in the Netherlands by our friend TK Model Making on Instagram. When I first saw this build, I thought it was just the coolest thing and something you definitely don't see every day. This is Meng's 135 scale King Tiger kit from 2017 and TK has detailed this beauty to the millionth degree. Tesa, and I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, shared with me that the Tiger II is his all-time favorite tank, and as such, he wanted to go all out on the details. The interior here is also by Meng. It's a separate kit, item SPS 037, and it includes all these really clever cutaway pieces so you can see all the internal elements of this iconic tank. These beautifully sculpted resin crew figures are from Stalingrad miniatures, and Taise has done an incredible job painting them up. In addition to the base interior kit from Meng, there are a whole bunch of aftermarket bits added to give this Tiger II an extra sense of authenticity, including metal tracks, Zimmerit application from ATAC, a PE detail upset from Voyager model, photo etched side skirts, and a metal barrel for the main gun and both of the MGs. And if that wasn't enough, there are some resin pioneering tools on here too. Talk about a labor of love. It's clear an incredible amount of work went into this build and the hard work has clearly paid off. Tesa started this project in October of 2020 and just wrapped it up with the final touch-ups over the last few days. And if you think this is as cool as I do, good news. He's planning on doing the same thing with the Panther A in the very near future. Tesa has been modeling for about four years and does everything from 135 scale armor builds like this one, all the way to Warhammer miniatures and 1-100 scale Flame of War minis. If you want to check out more of Tesa's stuff, you can hop over to tk.modelmaking on Instagram and follow along there. He'll also be competing in the World Model Expo contest in Eindhoven this summer. Thanks so much for sharing your fantastic Tiger II with us and good luck at the expo. Shifting gears to something a little smaller, our next build comes from us from a few countries over in Austria. We've got an incredible little 1 1 44th scale diorama from Michael of Starfish Scale Modeling, featuring not one, but two aircraft kits from Bren Gun. One of my favorite parts of this hobby is the storytelling element. Whether it's just the build itself, or it's with the accompanying diorama or vignette, there's so much flexibility in this hobby to get creative and really convey a moment and an emotion in your work. And I think Michael has definitely done that here. He calls this dio out of fuel, and I think it really captures the weight of those final months of the war as the Allies closed in around Germany, and it gives us a really interesting what-if sort of scene. The two kits here, as I mentioned, are from Bren Gun. The first is their 1 144 scale Heinkel HE-162, which is an experimental fighter program started towards the end of the war that was sort of a last-ditch effort to get more jets in the fight to fend off those endless Allied bomber streams. Called the Volksjager, or People's Fighter, the HE-162 is designed to be built by relatively unskilled laborers out of simple materials like wood, because most of the traditional materials were in such short supply by the end of 1944. All in all, around 300 were built, and the 162 first saw combat operations in April of 1945. They accounted for a presumed two victories against British fighters, both over Germany. The other aircraft that Michael has built up here is the Horton HO-229, which was a prototype wonder weapon designed by the Horton Company. This groundbreaking jet-powered flying wing design was built to fulfill Hermann Göring's order for a 3 by 1000 light bomber. And what that entails is a bomber that could deliver a 1000 kilogram payload up to 1000 kilometers away at a speed of 1000 kilometers per hour. Which for my American friends is about 2200 pounds of boom, 620 miles away at over 600 miles an hour. And if that sounds absolutely ridiculous by World War II standards, that is because it is. The Germans made three prototypes of the 229, one suffered catastrophic engine failure and crashed on the third test flight, killing the pilot, and the war ended before the program could really go anywhere. But, the Americans did recover the airframe of the third prototype and sent it home for extensive testing, and many of the learnings from that aircraft can be seen in post-war designs like the YB-35, the YB-49, and onwards into modern designs like the Avro Vulcan and the B-2 Spirit. 
And the sole surviving 229 fuselage is currently on display at the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum's facility in Virginia, if you'd like to go check it out. Now, back to Michael's little awesome dio here. The barrels, pallets, tarps, craters, and everything we see here are all scratch built, except for the models themselves, which I think is super impressive at this tiny scale. And there's so much detail to enjoy here. Michael's included these two pilot figures, also from Bren Gunn, nervously awaiting the call to take flight and face an overwhelming enemy. I also really enjoy the paint job he's used here. I love these late warfighter colors and the markings, and it just looks awesome. And if you'd like to learn more about these two builds, Michael has full videos for each on his YouTube channel. You can check those out at Starfish Scale Modeling on YouTube, and you can also see his work at Starfish Scale Modeling on Facebook or on Instagram. So thank you, Michael, for your submissions this week. Super cool concept and awesome execution. Thank you for sharing. Our next build today comes to us from Thailand, and I think this one is so much fun. I've seen a lot of folks do what-if schemes, kind of like what we just saw with Michael's 1-144 dio, but this next one is truly out of this world. This submission is from builder Bob Z on YouTube, and you guys might know that aside from being a World War II buff, I'm also a really big Star Wars fan. So for me, what Bob's done here is awesome. This is his what-if Panzerkampf Gehilfe, which translates from German to Combat Tank Walker. If you're also a Star Wars fan, you'll recognize the base model for this is an ATST. This is Bandai's 148 scale version, and Bob's done this up in an awesome German tricolor camo scheme with some really cool modifications. The main armament laser cannons have been removed and replaced by a 75mm gun, and Bob has also drilled out the barrels on the secondary armament to look like machine guns, grenade launchers, and a flamethrower. Super cool, and the modifications look seamless. Another awesome addition here, and one that I honestly didn't notice at first, but it adds so much character, are the bolt heads on all of the armor panels. Bob cut up some 0.3 millimeter styrene rod and mounted that on the corners of each panel to replicate bolts. And I think that effect was an awesome way to kind of anchor this build in 40s technology, so to speak, even though it's originally a sci-fi vehicle. The beautiful diorama scene we have here was also entirely scratch built using polystyrene sheets and rods of various sizes to make this sort of maintenance bunker carved out of the side of a hill. There's so much to look at and say about this kit, but mostly just bravo. Awesome idea, phenomenal execution, you can learn more about this build over at Bob's YouTube channel, Bob Z. He's got a two-part video on the build process for you to check out whenever you have a chance. I'll have his account and all the other accounts for today's featured builders linked in the description below as well. A few notes on Bob. Like many of us, he started modeling as a kid and stopped when life and all those other fun things got in the way. And after about 45 years, this little global pandemic thing shut the whole world down and he decided to give modeling a shot again. This is only his seventh build back in the game and I'd say he's off to a great start. So thanks, Bob, for sharing your ATST with us today. I might just have to give one of these a go when I get a chance, because this is pretty cool. Well, my friends, those are our three features for this first Spruce and Brews scale model showcase. A huge thank you to Tesa, Michael, and Bob for sharing your builds with us. And another big thank you to everyone who submitted builds for this week's episode. As I mentioned before, be sure to tune in next Friday, because there's a very good chance your build might be on the feature list. If you haven't already, it's super easy to submit your own work for the Scale Model Showcase, whether you're an experienced modeler or you're just getting into the hobby. First, send me an email with three images of your finished build to spruceandbrewscalemodeling at gmail.com. Be sure to include Scale Model Showcase in the subject line. You can also DM me your images on Instagram at spruceandbrews. Number two, tell me a little bit about yourself and about the build. And three, be sure to subscribe right here to Spruce and Bruce Scale Modeling on YouTube. You'll be supporting the channel, and as a bonus, you'll be the first to know when the next episode of Scale Model Showcase comes out. Easy as that. Be sure to give these fellows a follow and subscribe to their personal accounts. And everybody else, send me your builds. I can't wait to see them. I'll see you back here next Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern for our next batch of models. And in the meantime, you can check out one of my own builds right here. Until next time, guys, be well, happy building. Cheers.